so very good evening to all the esteemed tax payers tax practitioners and other viewers who had come to this uh, live webinar on invoicing conducted by gst network and uh, this is mainly for the benefit of the tax payers who are going to start invoicing from 1st of january 2021 and as you all know gstn has been in the forefront of awareness building and outreach for the tax payers especially on the latest uh, developments whether it is invoice or any other updates on the common portal and uh, gstn has already published a detailed elaborate set of frequently asked questions on invoice they are available on public domain and wide circulation and we published several help videos and even faq videos elaborating the provisions of the e invoice as well as the frequent asked questions and uh, recently e invoice at a glance a short document was also a 10 page document was published it was even translated into hindi also and it was mailed to all the taxpayers who are between the 100 to 500 crore turnover bracket and uh, even on the nic crp port as well as on the youtube channel of gstn there are several videos available for the benefit of tax payers so in the in continuing continuing with this awareness and outreach gstn is very happy to conduct this outreach session for the tax payers and uh, as you all know from 1st of october 2020 the e invoicing has successfully started for 500 crore plus turnover tax payers and uh, as on 4th of december more than 30000 gstians are generating irns successfully on the irp that is the e invoice portal so before i go into the presentation and the presentation by the nic officers i now request sri dheeraj rastogi svp gst network to give the inaugural address over to you sir good afternoon everyone i would just give you a little uh, brief background about the e invoicing as to how the uh, how it has been uh, made mandatory and how the decision to introduce the e invoice came around in the 35th meeting of the gst council held in june 2019 the council decided that we should introduce electronic invoicing or popularly known as e invoice in a phase wise manner Now, when we say that uh, electronic invoicing, it does not mean that the invoice has to be reported. The invoice has to be generated from the portal. In fact, it has to be generated on the uh, IT system of the uh, trade, and the, it has to be thereafter reported to the uh, IRP portal. From the IRP portal, one uh, would be getting the IRN. the irn and the qr code has to be printed on the invoice and then invoice can be issued, issued to the recipient so in short it is exactly not the invoice issued from the government portal but it is actually the reporting of the invoice data to the government portal now one good question what is the rationale behind this uh, uh, introducing this e invoice it had been noticed word over that any business to business invoice has to be entered into multiple databases at in multiple times for example once it has to be entered into the uh, return in our case a separate e way bill has to be generated before the delivery of the goods and then thereafter the recipient of the invoice he enters the data 
in his system for reconciliation purposes as well as claiming the input tax credit. Now, there would be several data inconsistencies arising because of the multiple data feeding. So, it is better that data is fed once and thereafter it travels to the other two systems. So, e invoice, if implemented fully, it means that B2B data will be reported once. And the reporting of the GST invoice becomes a natural and integral process of the business. Since there would be no data discrepancy, the compliance burden would be reduced. And it would also reduce in uh, substantially the credit verification issues, which the administration uh, faces at the time of audit or integration. So as a result, the business has the advantage that a tax relevant process is getting automated, as well as it is getting integrated with the electronic variable system. And word over studies have shown that electronic invoice reduces the compliance cost substantially. For example, in case of corporate businesses, the international studies have shown that it, uh, it reduces the time by about 35 times, 35 percent cost. And in case of private businesses, since those are generally the businesses having, uh, I mean, uh, very few people. So for them, savings are even more. And sometimes it goes even up to 50%. 50% in the sense because they would be keeping an uh, accountant, especially for this purpose, who would be collecting the all data, preparing a return, and then uh, giving it to the tax authorities. And needless to say that it reduces, uh, it simplifies the compliance uh, uh, burden also. And natural advantage that comes out of it to the government is that a lot of manpower that they have to employ for the purpose of compliance management, they can. I mean, divert it elsewhere and say so they have better tax management, better HR usage. And in turn, with the savings, they can give the tax reliefs in order to spur the economic activities. So essentially, the generation of the e invoice from the iron portal is a two step process. In the first step, the invoice is generated in the standard format on the uh, system of the entity himself. And thereafter, in the second step, it has to be reported to the central system designated by the tax department, which in our case is the IRN portal. IRN portals in the near real time generate the number and the QR code containing the essential details of the invoice and gives it back to the entity who has generated the IRN. Now, while it has been generated, uh, it has been introduced in India, it would be worthwhile to look at the international scenario also. Essentially, today the world is connected with each other. So if you have something which is introduced in India in isolation, or we just keep ourselves of the developments in the other world, then perhaps we would be left out. Countries across the world have adopted the standards like PAPAL or the UBL, PEPOL is another, I mean, PEPOL is also based on UBL. So India has also used the same standards and adopted 
I mean, modified modify it according to our needs. And we have also developed our standards around PEPOL. So with minor adjustments, perhaps in future, we can integrate to the world our invoices from here can travel across the world, system to system. Looking to when it, the world started going towards the e-invoicing, the pioneer in the uh, in uh, generating the e-invoice was perhaps the South Korea, who started in 1997, and then graduated to business business to business invoices. Thereafter, it was made compulsory from 2000 uh, for two, uh, in 2005 i think first time by the denmark and thereafter these standards were followed and uh, i mean these systems were followed in various other european countries so overall the development of the e invoice started from 1997 till it became full fledged system in many countries across the world by 2014. So in India, now we have started, but we have the advantage and learning from across the world. So they took around uh, three years to start making the preparation and educating the trade. And then thereafter, they took about up to 11 years to stabilize. Whereas in India, we can leapfrog having the knowledge across the world, uh, from across the world. And the results can be seen in these statistics. We started e invoice for the entities above uh, turnover of 500 crores. About 55, uh, 51,000 GST IANs were required to do it, out of which, uh, due to exemptions, a number of them were exempted. So maybe about 30,000 were required to be uh, generating the e-invoice. During the month of October, about 4.9 crores IRN were generated, which rose to 5.9 crores in November. And about 88% of the IRN is coming through the GSPs. Now, system having stabilized only in a month or so, only in the first two, three days, there were a significant number of errors which were reported. And the GSTN and NIC took the initiative to contact those uh, entities, taking them uh, uh, on call, giving them a helping hand, and educating them about the errors. And within next three, four uh, days, the entire thing is stabilized. So in the beginning, where only about 14,000 or 15,000 uh, IRN was getting generated, now the peak on a peak day, about 32,000 IRNs are getting generated in a day. And hence, seeing that it has stabilized, the government is going ahead to make it compulsory for all the businesses having turnover above 100 crores. With this step, about 90,000 GSTIN would be required who would be generating the uh, IRN. But looking to the way it has stabilized, we do not see any major hurdle. The GSTN team is here. The NIC team is here to support all of you. And for the support of trade, while in the first phase, the majority of the IRNs were generated by the, uh, through the system of GST, uh, GST practitioners. Now, uh, uh, sorry, not uh, G, uh, uh, th through the system of GSPs. But now, NIC has made available a tool also, offline tool, 
which can be downloaded by the uh, by the entities and it can be used by them by feeding their data from the system to generate IRN in a bulk. So with these words, I invite uh, Ravi back to conduct the uh, webinar further and uh, I mean give his presentation gen uh, to educate the public. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for uh, giving a brief overview of the invoice. Not only that, but the, the global context in which the invoice is evolving in India. So now uh, I will take you through the presentation on the invoice. Myself, I am Ravi Kiran I am a Vice President at GST Network. I am looking after uh, invoicing. And uh, in my presentation, Sanjay, can you confirm? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. So, e invoice system, how it is going to ease the doing business and how it is going to ease GST compliance. So, let us see. And this is the session plan for today. We'll be seeing the concept and the recent updates and the process flow involved in the invoice. And also what are all the popular FAQs being asked by trade. And then followed by the presentation by NIC where they'll be giving the overview of the IRP and how IRN can be generated using the offline utility both bulk generation tools as well as the latest released tool that is GEPP, GST invoice preparation and printing tool. And then uh, followed by overview of the API and sandbox where the developers can test and integrate their systems with the e invoice portal. And what are all the common errors being observed in the integration as well as the reporting so that you can avoid them when you are going to integrate. And then lastly, it is followed by a session. So the contents of this presentation are already available on public domain, especially in the form of videos and FAQs on, uh, on this, uh, uh, portals, especially GSTN's YouTube channel as well as NIC portal. So I will just quickly go through once again, because there may be many people who are new to this. So the very concept of e invoicing, if we see, presently the suppliers are issuing the invoice to their buyers directly. That means there is no intervention of any government or any statutory portal. But now in the e invoicing scenario, the supplier who is having a system to generate and receive documents in JSON format, they will be uploading these invoices, credit and debit notes in JSON format to the notified portal. This notified portal we are calling as IRP, that is invoice registration portal or popularly called as e-invoice portal. The notified portal performs prescribed validations and gives back the signed invoice JSON. Again, it will give back the invoice in JSON format only. And along with that, it will sign the it will sign the invoice. That means it will add a digital signature and it will generate a unique IRN, that is invoice reference number, which is embedded in a QR code, that is quick response code. So these three things you will get back. What is the digital signature? Second is the IRN and the QR code embedded with the IRN. Then the supplier issues the so-called e-invoice, that is the invoice copy, whether it in paper or electronic form, by quoting the QR code, which in turn contains the IRN. So if we see step by step, the taxpayers will continue to create their invoices in their own systems. This is what emphasized earlier also, that there is no generation of invoice by the 
IRP. You will continue to generate invoices in your own system. And now those invoices will be reported to IRP and IRP returns an IRN which is embedded in a QR code. And then the invoice can be issued to the receiver. A GST invoice will be valued only with a valid IRN. Now coming to what the law says about uh, e-invoice. Curiously, the terms e-invoice or the e-invoicing, which we popularly are calling it, they don't find mention in the laws. Nowhere you can find them. If you see rule 48.4 of CGST rules, what it says is this is the heart of e-invoicing. This rule 48.4 is the heart of e-invoicing process. What it mandates is the notified class of registered persons. Of course, there are a few exemptions, which we will see a little later. And these notified persons, in case of supplies to a registered persons, are for exports, which we are saying as B2B loosely, and also for the purpose of export supplies. They have to prepare their invoice. Here is the key. The invoice is all about preparing the invoice in a particular way. They have to prepare the invoice by uploading specified particulars in a statutory notified format. That is INV01. Where you have to upload? It is on invoice registration portal. And you have to update an invoice reference number. That is IRN. And after following this due e-invoicing process, the invoice copy, please hear here. The invoice copy now also, even in the e-invoicing scenario, you may issue it in paper or electronic form, whether it is by email or anything. But it is going to continue, it is going to contain the QR code, which in turn contains a valid IRN. So that is referred to as e-invoice. So it is very important to see what e-invoicing is not. As mentioned by the Earlier, e invoice is not about invoice being in soft copy or like PDF shared by email. And it doesn't mean generation of the invoice by a government portal. We already saw that it, you, you are going to continue to generate it and only report it for the purpose of generating IRN. What are the other key legal provisions relating to e-invoice? The law is very clear. It says that wherever e-invoicing is applicable, if the notified person issues the invoice in case of B2B and exports, of course, in any other manner shall not be treated as an invoice. So if, if they don't follow this process of obtaining IRN, the invoice copy is not at all an invoice in the eyes of GST law. It is just a paper, nothing more than that. And wherever e-invoicing is applicable, issuing of invoice in duplicate and triplicate, as you all know, it is there for goods and services earlier. This requirement is done away with. You can issue as many invoices, copies as you want. And there are certain penalties. Many are asking, if we don't follow invoicing process, what will be the penal consequences? You can refer to section 122. Some of the ingredients are here. Some of the scenarios are here where the supplies are made without issue of invoice. If there is a failure to keep or maintain or retain documents in accordance with the provisions of law or fails to issue invoice in accordance with the provisions of law. These are only some of the things. There are many other provisions. You may kindly go through section 22 so that you will come to know the penal consequences if the invoicing process is not followed. Now, what are the other amendments made recently? Earlier, the notification said regarding the turno turnover threshold. If the turnover has, if the aggregate turnover in a financial year was there earlier, now it is specified that those who cross the prescribed turnover in any preceding financial year 
from 2017-18 onwards will be covered. It means what? If someone crosses the turnover threshold in the middle of the financial year, he will be required to do invoicing from the start of next financial year. For example, today is uh, 16th of December. If someone crosses the turnover now, uh, today, he has some time window still and he will be required to start invoice from 1st of April 2021. So this is a significant change. The word the words are changed as in any preceding financial year. Then even the exports are also specifically included. Earlier it was not there. And third bullet point here you can see the QR code having the invoice reference number has to be part of invoice copy. If you see rule 46, there are several ingredients which are mandatory to be kept on an invoice issued to the buyer. So the QR code, please see it, it is not the IRN. It is only the QR code which in turn contains the IRN which has to be printed or placed on the invoice copy. And in case of any contingency, for example, there is an internet shutdown due to law and order situation or any issues in a remote localities where the taxpayers are unable to generate IRN, they are unable to access the IRP. So in those cases, the commissioner can exempt a person, means a registered person, a business, or a class of registered persons from invoicing requirement for a specified period. So this localized relaxation mechanism is also given for the benefit of taxpayers. And where invoicing is applicable during the moment of goods on road, the carrying the physical copy of entire invoice is not at all needed. Now there is an amendment to the effect that it is sufficient if the QR code having the IRN is produced electronically for the verification by the proper officer. Reports to enter into the airport, we are not uh, showing the entire paper copy of the airline ticket. We are just we are just showing the uh, electronic copy of our boarding pass or the ticket from our mobile phone, which is a valid mode of checking. So in the same way, during the moment of goods also, a very useful relaxation is given if you show the digital copy of QR code, it is sufficient. And to whom invoicing is applicable? So those taxpayers are the registered persons whose aggregate turnover based on PAN. Please be clear here, it is aggregate turnover as defined in section 2 of the GST Act, CGST Act. And in a financial year since 1780. If it is more than prescribed limit, that is 500 crores from October 1st, uh, 1st 2020 and 1st of January 2021 for 100 to 500 crores. So as per the relevant notification. And what are the exempt entities? Their SZ units and all those entities which are mentioned in Rule 54 who are even now, they have a special pricing dispensation that is insurance, banking, goods transport agency, passenger transport services, multiplex cinema admissions. So these limited set of taxpayers, these entities are exempt from e-invoicing. So the documents and supplies covered, though we are mentioning or though we are referring it as e-invoicing, the documents covered are tax invoices under section 31 and credit and debit notes under section 34 of the CGST or SGST acts. And the supplies covered are the supplies to the registered persons, which we are loosely calling as B2B, business to business, and supplies to SEZs and exports, deemed exports. And if you see here, business to consumer supplies, B2C supplies are presently not covered irrespective of the value. Only B2B and exports are covered.
so it is very very important to see e invoicing is much more than getting irn from the irp if you go by the law it says that certain tax payers have to report their invoices and obtain irn but if you see the e invoicing whole scheme we have made a schema which is a standard format for electronic invoice it is already notified as inv01 and uh, this was being, uh, it was meant here sir also in his presentation that this is based on universal business language that is you in that sense it has a global standard and it has all the typical elements of a commercial invoice this means what the government is not only capturing the tax given data for the purpose of gstr 1 or for the fiscal purposes but the government is capturing the entire commercial invoice between a buyer and a seller so this makes e invoice machine readable and interoperable the entire invoice json can be read by a machine it can be any machine it can be buyers erp or gsp it can be any machine it can be readable so it becomes interoperable so between machines it can be operated easily exchanged easily so e invoicing facilitates exchange of invoices between suppliers and buyers in a structured electronic format so that is why we are saying it is not simply electronic form like pdf or by email the whole invoice transmission will happen between two different systems two finance or accounting systems of the suppliers and buyers but please note that even in the e invoice scenario currently currently as of now once the irn is received you will be sharing the invoice to your buyer in the same way as you are doing it may be by post or courier or email or uploading it on a portal and giving him the url to download it securely so all these things will be done but in due course this electronic download or exchange of invoices by buyers will be enabled so because of these reasons e invoice has a lot of benefits for the tax payers it's not only reporting something to the government even among the businesses there will be reduction of reconciliation issues data entry errors improvement in payment cycles there will be better internal controls and reductions of reduction of disputes and an incidental benefit from taxation and compliance point of view is that your entire gstr 1 and 2a will get auto populated with the e invoice data the tax payers will reap the benefits once this turnover threshold is gradually moved downwards so we already told <coughs> that this whoever is generating e invoices their gstr 1 and 2a will be auto populated with e invoice data and the gst system itself will do the mapping of e invoice fields in gstr 1 and aggregate the items on a rate basis and populate it to gstr 1 as you know in a typical invoice it is it is a hsn based or the item wise details are there but in case of gstr 1 it is a rate wise so that rate wise aggregation will be done by the gst system need not bother about it or you need not have a separate system to do that process for you so that is the advantage but we yeah, will auto populate the status in case of cancellation also within 24 hours if you cancel the e invoice the status will be reflected in the gstr1 also and please note that at the time of filing of gstr1 all the freedom is with you to either delete or edit or modify the auto populated e invoice details the facility of auto population is only to help you 
so the at the end of the tax period the freedom and the responsibility is with you to upload the gstr1 in an appropriate way and in the manner you are doing now the facility of uh, auto population is only to help you then what is the detailed flow involved in the e invoicing process the supplier will have a system or a utility for example those people who are having their own erp systems which is having the capability to prepare and receive json or they can download a free offline utility or the jep utility uh, jep tool from the e invoice portal to prepare and receive json and he uploads the e invoice json into irp as per the schema and through apis apis are nothing but pipelines between two systems so between the supplier system and the invoice system you can imagine there are some pipelines connecting so through those pipelines the invoice data reaches the government portal that is the invoice registration portal the e invoice portal validates the data generates irn and it also sends the whole invoice payload whole invoice data to the gst system to the pipelines of apis that is government to government apis because both are government systems now the gst system as it has all the data presently it is from one irp maintained by nic national informatic center tomorrow it can be many so all the irns all the invoices getting generated through irps will come and getting saved in this gst system so the gst system what it does it rules out the existence of the same irn in other words it will ensure the irn is unique for the document number in that financial year and then it will confirm the same to the irp then irp adds the qr code signs the invoice json and where the taxpayer has asked for e way bill generation it will send the payload to the e way bill system also for generation of e way bill so ultimately what happens the supplier receives the signed json with the irn and he issues the invoice to the buyer the so called e invoice that is the invoice copy with irn which is embedded in a qr code the moment he does that the moment the whole process is over that means the irn is successfully generated the gstr1 of the supplier and gstr2 a of the respective buyers they will be auto populated with the e invoice data so that buyers can view their invoice details in their 2a so with the qr code on the invoice copy or even by uploading the whole invoice json which is received from the irp the buyer can verify the authenticity of the invoice whether this invoice given by the supplier is genuine or not whether it is really reported to the irp or not whether the digital signature is tampered or not he can securely verify it so this completes the e invoice process and before i close i wanted to tell you few frequently asked questions there are many but i said i selected few for you so that it laid because today it's a live streamed email event so even before you ask these questions i wanted to clarify this so people are asking will i need to enter the details on a web based screen or and obtain a reference number in invoicing scenario as i told you we are primarily talking about machine to machine exchange of invoice data so as a rule we are expecting it to be machine to machine but those who are not having those machines or systems to generate json in a prescribed format they are given the offline utility and also the enhanced almost uh, that a jep tool which almost mimics like a website though it is a offline tool you will feel like as you have gone to a website and entering some details just like we enter the details for uh, 
booking our railway ticket on an IRCTC website, you will feel like that. And of course, in future, there will be web-based screens or mobile apps, but they'll be used only by only small taxpayers having very few invoices to report. So what are the present, what are the modes of generating IRN? So you can see the second bullet point. Broadly, the modes of generation of IRN are API based. That means direct integration with the taxpayer's ERP system. And again, API based integration with the taxpayer's ERP system through a chosen GSP or the ASP provided by their GSP. And the third broad is through an offline Excel utility. It can be that uh, bulk generation tool in Excel or the JEP tool, which is released recently. So these are all broadly the modes of generating IRN. This will be explained in detail by in the next part of the presentation. And uh, is invoicing voluntary? No. Presently, only those notified persons are allowed to report invoices to IRP. That means only, only the taxpayers above the prescribed turnover, they are only enabled on the invoice portal so that they can register and generate IRNs on the portal. So for example, so that means people below the threshold like uh, uh, five, uh, 10 crores or 50 crores turnover, they can't at their option generate IRNs. So a common question asked is, how to know my supplier is supposed to issue invoice? Please give me a list so that I'll be very careful. But please note that on the fulfillment of prescribed conditions, whether it is turnover or exemptions, the obligation to issue invoice lies with the concerned taxpayer only. For example, no one can give a list of taxpayers or a, a list of businesses who are supposed to take GST registration. Only those businesses will be knowing it, whether to take GST registration or not. In the same way, no one can give a ready-made list. Yes, these people are, these taxpayers are supposed to generate e invoicing. However, as a facilitation measure, because GST system is having the turnover data, so that's why what we have done, all the taxpayers who have crossed the prescribed threshold, that is 100 crores or 500 crores, based on the GST or 3B data available in the system, all of them are enabled on the portal. That enablement status can be found here. In the third bullet point, you can see the navigation. You can go and set the status of the taxpayer, whether he's enabled or not. So this fourth bullet point is very, very important. This is being asked by several taxpayers. The enablement status on trial portal for 100 crores and above and production portal for 500 crores and above now as on date, it doesn't mean that the taxpayers where is supposed to do e invoicing. I already told you this enablement is based on the turnover data available in the GST system. So it may include exempt entities like banks, insurance or any other uh, GTAs. So this enablement, why we are doing this enablement, you may ask. So this enablement is to ensure that only those taxpayers who are above a particular threshold, they only will come to portal and register themselves for generation of IRNs. That is the purpose of enablement. So if invoicing is not applicable to a taxpayer because he's exempt or for any other reason, he need not be concerned about this status and he can ignore this, that status. So one more thing, a very related thing and important thing is, we can very well give a list of GSTINs who are actually generating IRN. So that list is being given and it is updated on a fortnightly basis. In future, we'll reduce that frequency. So that at any point of time, you can check 
who are generating irns so as on 4th of december 2020 there are about 32000 gstins generating irns on the portal and uh, this is the latest update that on the gst portal on the post login it is not available on the pre login under the set taxpayer section the aggregate turnover range for example 50 to 100 crores 100 to 500 crores 500 crores and above this kind of a range not the exact turnover this range is given against a particular gstin so you can just key in one gstin and can see what is the aggregate turnover range he is having so that you can know the size of the taxpayer and it will give you a useful hint that yes this taxpayer might be might have the requirement to issue e invoice it is not final but it will give you a useful hint because the final whether the somebody is doing e invoicing or not it depends upon the exemptions other notification conditions his precise turnover and various other things so it is the it is your due diligence as a business dealing with your supplier to ensure and confirm from the supplier that he is supposed to do or not supposed to do e invoicing so we have crossed the prescribed turnover but we are not enabled on the portal what to do so there is a form given under the registration e invoice enablement this is the tab you can go there and you can just enter your gstin and make a declaration that we we have crossed the prescribed turnover the very next day your gstin will be enabled so that you can register or you can end, you can with your uh, you even e way bill credentials you can start generating irn or you can test the irns on the trial portal even for the enablement on trial portal please note that you have to make your request on the irp that is the e invoice production portal which is here then the exemption is for the supply or transaction or for the entire entity it is already clarified it is for the entire entity where to where to mention the tcs tax collected at source under income tax act so we have already clarified or we have rather given a work around that presently there is no separate place holder for tcs please give it in the other charges section at invoice level other invoice level so that it won't participate in the tax calculation and you can mention there and in future in the next revision of schema we will give it and this is a very frequently asked question when we are reporting details to the portal whether digital signature is mandatory no you need not give digital signature that's why digital signature is not there in the scheme also inv01 but once you report the irp will give the digital signature or add the digital signature and give you a signed json after obtaining irn and while issuing the invoice copy to the buyer whether i need to put signature or not so for this in invoicing doesn't change the law or the present provisions it is already governed by rule 46 of cgst rules you can see that there the provision whether it is required or not the signature or the digital signature it is clearly there so it is governed by that it has to be printed in case of invoicing all the ingredients all the parameters as per rule 46 along with qr code which in turn contains the irn this is the latest edition this has to be printed is there any reporting window is there any limitation for example the document date is october in the in the in the month of october i want to report it or i want to generate the irn in the month of december whether it is possible yes presently there is no validation kept between the document date and the reporting date
what about cancellation it can be cancelled within 24 hours from the time of reporting for example today 4 o'clock 4 pm you have reported and generated an irn it can be cancelled tomorrow before 4 pm just like the eway bill however if the connected eway bill is active or verified by the proper officer on the road during road checks the cancellation of irn will not be permitted and once cancelled gstr1 also will get updated what about amendments amendments are not possible on irp any changes in the invoice details related to irp can be carried out on the gstr port gst portal while filing gstr1 please remember that many are asking this question i have generated an irn i could not cancel it within the cancellation window of 24 hours i could not amend uh, I, I am anyway not able to amend it on the e invoice portal what to there is no problem in fact uh, generation of irn is almost more or less similar to generating a token number from a website initially you have you you, are, you wanted to you have created an invoice in your system and you generated an irn yes but for some reasons which are very much possible in the business scenarios you had to cancel it or you cancel it and issue you cancel or you modify it by issue of credit note or you want to modify it all these things are possible so for that you can generate a credit note or you can generate a new invoice and generate a new irn but when you are filing gstr1 please do the reconciliation and whatever those those uh, invoices which you could not cancel within the 24 hour window you please uh, you can uh, delete them also from the from the gstr1 tables and finally file your gstr1 the gstr1 filed by you voluntarily at the, the tax period that is only final just because you have generated an irn on a particular day and the invoice details have changed at a later date kindly don't worry please ensure your gstr1 is filed properly with the accurate uh, actual details and wherever there is a discrepancy between the e invoices generated and those reported in gstr1 finally after your filing of gstr1 they will be compared and if at all any discrepancies are there is a reason to doubt they will be flagged to the proper officer they may be taking up for verification if needed how to verify the authenticity of invoice you can verify by uploading the whole invoice json on the portal or there is a qr code verify mobile app which is available on the download section of the irp you can just download it it is not available android or ios play stores apple play store directly you need to enter your uh, mobile number and you will get an sms there is a small process involved in that just a very few within few within a half minute you can do the, all that process don't worry and you can install it in your mobile once installed any qr code on any e invoice you can easily verify it and the mobile app will tell you whether the qr code is intact and genuine or not so lastly many many taxpayers are confusing e invoicing with the b2c dynamic qr code there is a notification 14 of 2020 dated 21st of march which says that entities with the aggregate turnover of more than a prescribed threshold they have to include a qr code on their b2c invoices that is business to customer invoices and the notification also says that this dynamic qr code made available to the buyer through a digital display having the payment cross reference shall be deemed to be having the qr code it means that it need not be printed on the invoice copy but if, uh, if they show it on the screen or on a digital display the requirement of the notification is deemed to have been met so this has nothing to do with the e invoicing as we have just now spoken e invoicing is more about b2b and export supplies 
not at all B2C. And the purpose of this notification is to enable and encourage digital payments. In fact, to tell you, neither GSTN nor NIC is involved in the implementation of this B2C dynamic QR code. And the CBIC and the Government of India, along with the NPCA, National Payments Corporation of India, will be coming up soon with the details on this dynamic QR code. So that's why please note that there is no connection between B2C dynamic QR code and the QR code generated by the IRP in case of e-invoicing, which is meant for B2B and export supplies. Kindly bear this in mind. So for more information and help on invoice, the first invoice registration portal, which is presently maintained by our esteemed service provider NIC is here. In the help section, you have got FAQs. And there is one more website, which is the trial portal, which is almost similar or almost a kind of mirror image of the production portal. But you can see here, trial is written here. So this is the portal where the 100 to 500 crores taxpayers now who are in a testing phase, they can come here, they can log in here, and they can upload and test whether the IRNs are generating properly or not. Are there any more errors coming? If errors are coming, how to overcome them? This, uh, this is a kind of uh, testing ground. And please note that earlier it happened that uh, some people who are using the e-way bills and e-invoices generated on uh, trial portal for the live movement of goods. Please don't do that. This trial portal is only for testing and whatever IRNs or uh, whatever the e-way bills you get, that is only for testing pur purpose. Otherwise, the problem you may face is that during the movement of the goods, if any proper officer checks using the mobile uh, QR code reader, this will be shown as inv invalid IRNs or invalid e-way bills. So that's why kindly use it only for testing purpose. And there is one more portal that is API sandbox portal where the developers can see how to integrate the APIs, how the system to system integration can happen through APIs and what are all the specifications. Everything is and a separate set of FAQs are also here. So invoice FAQs can be seen here on uh, e-invoice portal, both uh, legal and procedure as well as technology related and also API separately. These FAQs answer most of the questions. And then for any other help on invoicing, whether it is on testing, whether it is on APIs, whether it is on e-invoice production portal, that is the main statutory invoice portal, anything and everything, please raise a ticket with GST portal, GST self-service portal. For the GST system, nowadays, anyway, any issues you are uh, reporting on this portal only, kindly use the same thing for e-invoicing also. And any suggestions on e-invoicing from your side are welcome at this email ID, e-invoice at gstn.org.in. So with this, I end my presentation. And now I request Mr. Suresh Mehti, Technical Director from National Informatics Center, Bangalore, to project his presentation and enlighten us about the offline utility and the overview of the invoice registration portal. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Raviji. Uh, very good evening, officers of GSTN and all the participants. The uh, presentation on uh, the invoicing highlights. So, of course, most of the highlights are basic things like how etc. have been already explained by. Uh, let me just go through this presentation. I have two presentations to make. Uh, one is on the uh, e invoice as a system. Plus, also, I'm going to uh, show you a recently released beta version of JEP tool. Most of the um, people are aware of NIC. NIC is National Informatics Center under Government of India. 
Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So we have been doing a lot of e-governance applications, which are mainly citizen-centric. We have been providing all these services, the state-of-the-art technologies, uh, at all the levels of governance, right from the central government to the block-level governance. Uh, NIC is very popular uh, wide area network which covered across the country uh, as early as 1980s. Uh, the NICnet has been the backbone of information flow uh, at the government government level. So it is not new uh, that NIC has been working on the tax uh, uh, departments. So we have been working with customs, VAT, PT, etc. And as you are all aware, EWIL, which has started on 1st of April 2018 uh, is NIC's project, and now uh, we are with the e uh, project. E invoices uh, already some of these have been uh, covered. Uh, so it gives the benefit uh, to all the stakeholders in the business, the suppliers. So they have to just uh, prepare the invoice once, and the same data can be pushed to the Registration portal for getting the IRN can be pushed to the EV bill if required to get the EV bill generated and can be pushed to the GST common portal for getting the uh, IRN populated uh, on an incremental basis. So the same digital form of invoice can be shared with the recipients so they can straight away import the same their, uh, ERP systems or financial accounting system. There is no need for uh, another redundant uh, data entry effort or the mistakes due to data entry. And similarly, the invoice details can be again pushed to the transporter also, uh, where again they can import them into their own uh, uh, ERP systems and they can uh, subsequently do whatever transactions uh, they want to do with this data, as uh, including the available generation. So the financial institutes also, uh, the same, which are digitally signed and digitally can be shared with them uh, for any quick financing and other activities and uh, GST officers will refer to these IRNs for verifying the documents etc and any other government which requires the submission of transaction details etc can be shared with these electronic invoices uh, which are as I mentioned they are in the digital form and they are in the uh, almost international standard we would say because we have Take a schema from the international standard, but small modifications have been done to suit the Indian requirements. As of now, two modes of generation of uh, uh, e one is the uh, yeah. Please go ahead. to interrupt you. Just a small announcement to all the uh, yeah. all the viewers that uh, you can post your questions in the YouTube comment section or the live chat so that they will be compiled systematically by our team and we will be answering them at the end of the session. Please continue. So these are the two modes available using which one can register their invoices and get the IRN. One is using the offline the utility which is available for download the invoice portal so one can populate the data into this excel uh, they can copy the data from their existing erp system or financial accounting system in the validated can be validated the uh, data in a json format will be generated as that can file can be uploaded onto the nic irp portal and whatever is the number of requests uh, contained in that particular file that many irns will be generated at once in bulk i will show some screenshots uh, how that process has to be carried out the other option is the api integration as it was uh, earlier explained it is the machine to machine integration so those companies which are already having some ERP or financial accounting system or any other computerized system, they can integrate their system with the e-invoice system using the API. I will cover like what are the options for integrating with the API shortly. Here 
you will be able to do all the operations on the e invoice in the production including registration or generation of bulk uh, irns looking at the irns already generated uh, on, through the mis report etc everything can be uh, done through this particular portal so many of the features of this portal are covered so it has a help section where uh, certain uh, uh, tutorial videos are there frequently questions are there and under help you have the tools under download the bulk generation file okay and under search you can search the taxpayers by providing the gstins and check up their status and you have verify signed invoice option wherein where you receive a digitally signed invoice in the digital form you can upload the signed invoice content uh, it's a digitally signed content that can be uploaded onto this portal and you can make sure that it is a authentic e digitally signed e invoice which you have received so this is for verification of the authentic signed invoice that you have received and there is an option for the e invoice checking the status of taxpayer whether they are enabled for e invoice or not so you can make use of this, of this option enter the gstin and to know whether that particular gstin is the e invoice or not and certain master codes etc are made available yeah, here actually uh, just clarify here uh, yeah uh, just yeah, to please, clarify yeah. here this e invoice status is the enablement status so this uh, this only shows whether someone is enabled or not so it may not exactly uh, mean whether he is supposed to generate or not that you have to confirm once for all with your supplier only yeah please continue sorry correct correct yeah and have uh, the registration link where uh, one can and if they are eligible for generation of the irs they can go to this registration there they can register themselves by giving their uh, registered uh, mobile number and email and they can create their own credentials and also under this in case you are eligible for generation of the irs but you are not enabled shown as enabled under this particular option you can go here and enable yourself for generation of the irn and uh, details like uh, what was your turnover for certain uh, last three years etc a simple form is there by filling up that form you will be able to uh, enable yourself for generation of the irns then subsequently once you have credentials you will be able to log in to this portal and there you have lot many other options uh, including um, so once you have got itself so you can use any kind of program only thing is your program should output the uh, the data in the form that is accepted by the irp portal so once you have downloaded this excel tool there are multiple sheets available uh, which are giving you uh, how to use this tool and what is the schema uh, what are the fields in this particular schema what is the data type used so making use of this you can prepare the required json using any of your application so as i mentioned earlier you don't have to use this particular use any other way of generation of the data in the required format and there you can add one time your details which you don't have to enter again and again for every time generating the irn once you can create your profile and set certain options wherein if you, if reverse charge is not applicable to you or if you are not a e-commerce operator you can turn off certain columns in the excel wherein you don't have to feed the data into those columns so such customization is possible in this excel tool and what are all the local values right here in another sheet so you can understand how to use this tool and once you have understood you can copy and paste the data from your existing erp system or the financial accounting system or whatever computerized system you have in the format that is required by this excel tool 
so you can copy uh, maybe hundreds or thousands of records from your uh, existing system paste into this sheet uh, as per the requirement and then when you click on the validate some local validations with respect to some local calculations of taxes etc as per date provided by you will be done locally. and once this validation is completed you can go and click on the prepare json button so once you click on this this data in the excel table tabular format will be converted to json format so this is what the nic's e invoicing system can understand so this file has to be uploaded onto the nic uh, irp portal by logging into the portal so once you log in into the portal you can go to invoice option and under that uh, upload bulk upload then you will get to know get to this screen so here is the option to upload so once you upload that already onto the portal if there are 100 invoices so they will be shown here that this particular json json file had request for generation of 100 uh, irns and what would be the total number of items in all the 100 invoices can be seen here and uh, once the irns are generated there may be some failures because of validation on the server side maybe when we check for the existence of the irns or the valid uh, the correctness of the hsn code there are various factors due to which it can fail on the server also so here you'll be able to see how many have succeeded and how many have failed so in the bottom uh, portion you will be able to see the irns that have been already generated uh, through this particular upload and there are two download options one is download excel which will download and show for all these 100 requests which have succeeded which have failed what is the reason for failure all such information will be available in the download excel uh, file when you click on the download sign json uh, button you will get a zipped file of the jsons containing the irn details with signed invoice and signed qr code in uh, in this case uh, for the successful 90 uh, cases you getting the uh, uh, invoice and signed QR code details. So this data you can import back into your ERP or the financial accounting system. Further, you can make use of this for printing or whatever purpose it is required. You can make use of this output from the IRP portal. So please note here the maximum file size of for the uploading is 2 MB. So 2 MB itself will be able to upload thousands of uh, IRN request at a time and you will be able to generate uh, at once. So in, incorrect invoices will be returned with the error codes. So you can correct those uh, mistakes and submit the uh, file again to generate the IRN. So whether you have generated the IRN to the bulk utility or the API, there is a provision for printing the uh, E invoice from the portal itself either by giving the IRN or the acknowledgement number. So either of the two are accepted and you will be able to print the uh, E invoice. So here it is showing the QR code on the top right uh, corner. So this contains the details about who is the supplier, who is the buyer and what is the main HS code, what is the value of the invoice. All such details will be available in this QR code and it's mandatory to print this QR code. So many questions are being asked like what should be the position of this, what should be the size of the QR code, etc. Uh, only thing that is mandatory is like it has to be printed. So where you print, it depends on the space available in your invoice format. So you can print it anywhere. And what should be the size? It should be ultimately readable by a QR code scanner. Okay? So that is the minimum size that is required. of irns is allowed within 24 hours so uh, there is a provision on the portal where you can cancel the already generated irn either by giving the irn number or the acknowledgement number so this is possible within 24 hours of generation provided there is no active eva bill uh, available for this particular document in case an eva bill is already generated it is noted by to be cancelled and subsequently the IRN has to be cancelled 
and once uh, an IRN is cancelled, you will not be able to regenerate the uh, IRN for the same document. You have to cancel the original invoice itself and with a sub different document number, you should register the invoice. As IRN or generated with IRN as a reference. So you can print the EV bill from the e invoice portal itself by providing the EV bill number. Integration there is a provision on the e invoice portal where the taxpayers can log in into the portal and go for in API registration. There, they can either uh, choose through GSP or there is another option through ERP. And third option would be uh, through already registered 500 crore and above uh, taxpayer. So direct integration is not allowed for the taxpayers who are having the turnover between 100 to 500. So only option for them would be to uh, through GSP or through ERP or any other taxpayers who are having more than 500 crore uh, turnover and they have already got the direct integration with NIC uh, IRP system. And one taxpayer can register with multiple GSPs, but whenever they are using the respective uh, GSP uh, credentials, they should be hitting the respective GSPs endpoints for the API. Public domain, public domain is to verify the invoice by uploading the signed JSON, whichever I shown in the beginning. So one can upload the signed invoice, which you have got as a response after generation of the IRN. Upload the uh, signed invoice onto the portal and verify whether it is intact. It is not tampered with. Uh, this is possible only because the invoice is still signature. So any small correction in the would uh, fail the validation and one will be able to know that this particular invoice is tampered with. And we have also provided a QR code reader and a mobile application which can be downloaded from the uh, portal and used for scanning the QR code on the printed invoices. And you will be able to uh, do two things through this application. One is verify the QR code. The other is verify sign invoice. So in the first option, when you scan the QR code on the printed invoice, you will be shown with the parameters which are embedded within the QR code, like the seller GSTN, buyer GSTN, the invoice uh, or the credit note, debit note number, the type of the document, document date, etc. And using the second option, invoice uh, details, and uh, this is also a verified one. So in case it is able to verify the signature, then only it will be showing you the content of the invoice. So there is a uh, API developer portal. So if you want to get your system integrated with the e-invoice system through the API, you can ask your technical team to visit this particular website, einb apis and the information is required to integrate your system with the e-invoice system using the API. This is the best mode uh, preferred because it's a machine to machine integration. So there is no uh, multiple uh, data entry and uh, there are no multiple data entry mistakes and uh, it can happen online. You can schedule the calls and it will uh, prepare the IRNs on the fly, etc. So this is the best mode of uh, integrating your system with the e invoice system. Everything required for uh, the developer, including the documentation on all the APIs which are available, some sample code, some uh, list to the master data, all such information is available at one particular place. So, uh, eligible taxpayers who are having more than 100 crore uh, turnover in the any of the last financial years, they have to come through the GSPs or ERPs. This can create a test account on this portal and they can uh, themselves test the APIs and integrate or they can create the accounts for their customers and their customers can make use of these credentials and test their API integration on this portal. Similarly, the ERPs, there are some identified ERPs who are uh, uh, allowed to act similar to the GSPs and uh, can 
test the APIs and facilitate testing by their customers on this portal. And e-commerce operators, again, they can also create the accounts and uh, they can test their application. It's like with the experience of uh, running e-invoice since 1st October for uh, more than 500 crore taxpayers. Uh, uh, as uh, Mr. Dheeraj sir was uh, telling in the beginning, initially there were a lot of errors. Of course, even now also there have been some errors uh, coming up from the, uh, the API integrations as well as the bulk tool. So we are looking at such errors and uh, we are automatically sending mails to such taxpayers who are generating large number of uh, errors and top 10 to 20 taxpayers we are talking to over phone personally and we are asking them to uh, correct the bugs in their application and within next one or two days the errors are going to uh, nil so this is what we are doing proactively from our side uh, but uh, we request you to take care of these things uh, why we are doing this is uh, like this will affect both the uh, not only both all the stakeholders uh, involved in the uh, e-invoice activity uh, unnecessarily this unproductive traffic will consume the, the computer resources of uh, the taxpayer as well as the uh, NIC's resources the bandwidth will be choked uh, with unproductive traffic and which in turn will affect not only yourself, even all the other stakeholders with respect to the performance. So we request you to take care of these things in the beginning itself when you are building your systems uh, and integrating through the uh, APIs. So there were some validity date related issues in the beginning which were sorted out in the first one or two days. And help desk has been uh, enriched with the uh, uh, knowledge on like how they have to respond to the uh, queries of the players. And as and when things are changing, we are updating the help desk to respond accordingly. And uh, uh, the same approach, whatever we are doing for the APIs has been followed for the bulk users also. And daily SMSs, uh, I think from today, we have started sending the SMSs on the uh, number of IRNs generated for the uh, taxpayers who have generated the IRNs. So, the common errors or mistakes that we are observing is people are um, sending the same request again and again. So as you are aware, only one IRN can be generated for a given document number and document type for that financial year for that particular supplier. So when you hit for the first time and you are able to generate the IRN, in response, you will be getting the IRN number, the signed invoice, the signed QR code, and if available is generated, the available number. So this definitely has to be stored in your database and that particular request has to be flagged as success. In case you have failed to get the response for the first time, if in case you hit the same API second time with the same payload, we will get, give back you a error message saying like this particular document has been already used to generate an IRN and the IRN details will be given back in the error message. At least during this call you should be able to get the details of the already generated IRN and you should stop hitting the API with the same payload subsequently and sometimes there will be errors a large number of errors saying the GSTN is not active so you have to update your local database uh, time to time and verify whether the GSTNs that are available in your database are active so you might have updated your database quite some time back and subsequently the GSTN uh, might have been cancelled and you will be using GSTN fails during the validation at the NIC site. And also make sure you are using the correct GSTIs uh, when you are passing them uh, either as a buyer or the ship to dispatch from GSTIs etc. And you have to pass the correct PIN codes uh, for the respective states and invalid HSM codes are uh, some of the major uh, errors we have seen. So you have to pass the appropriate uh, uh, HSM codes. So for all the masters, we have uh, uh, a po in the portal, we have a place where you will be able to see the list of all the available masters at NIC ENY system, like the state master, country master, port master, currency master, the HSM codes. All things are published at one place in the 
uh, e-invoice portal under search. So you can go there and verify the data and accordingly you can pass the values. And some calculation mistakes like calculation of the IGST, SGST, CGST uh, values and uh, sometimes the flag uh, says like uh, is service but uh, the uh, goods uh, HSN is being passed. So these kind of validations actually the server side. So you have to take care of these things in the beginning itself. So we have published uh, on the e-invoice uh, API developer portal the error as well as the cause for the errors and the possible resolutions. So one can go through this make better use of this information to avoid the errors uh, when you integrate with the NIC portal. So this is the help desk through which we are uh, serving your uh, queries or issues. So please provide the sufficient and correct information when you are raising a ticket, when you are not able to uh, generate IRM or when you are not able to authenticate or when you are not able to register. Please provide the sufficient and correct information to this um, uh, portal. Uh, will be able to help you out. Uh, doubts about taxpayers, especially the taxpayers who are in the bracket of 100 to 500 crores turnover, uh, they, they are trying to get a direct access. But because of the technical feasibility and logistics, we will not be able to give a direct API integration for taxpayers in, in the range of 100 to 500 crore uh, turnover. So these are the different uh, uh, ways of connectivity. One is uh, through GSP, both uh, more than 500 as well as 100 to 500 taxpayers can uh, connect uh, to the API system. Through ERP, you will be able to connect. But for direct API integration, only taxpayers more than 500 core will be able to uh, connect directly to the NIC API system. So it is not uh, provided for 100 to 500 core taxpayers. And through direct uh, API, uh, it is a common practice, especially in the automobile industry and other manufacturing industries where one common ERP will be used by all the stakeholders. So if there is a, a taxpayer who is having more than 500 crore turnover and he has got the direct API access, they will be able to onboard the his suppliers or his buyers who are in the 100 to 500 category and he can provide the channel for them to hit the NIC. Uh, API system and those who are already having access to generate the e bills through API, they will be provided the direct API access on the AMI system. I hope this is clear. For going through a GSP or a ERP, there will be apprehension among the taxpayers saying my data will be stored on the GSP system on, on the third party system. So actually this is the way the integration has to happen when you are going through the GSP or a ERP or a, uh, other uh, taxpayers who are more crore. The key is actually given to you. So you have to encrypt the data at your side itself the, and you will be passing the data through the GSP. GSP will act only as so GSP Text and he is not able, he is not supposed to store your credentials and he is not supposed to store your data. So it is a transparent uh, media in between through which the taxpayer system will talk to the e invoice system. Okay, so please don't uh, be under the uh, threat that like uh, my data gets uh, stolen by the GSP and ERP system. It depends on how you integrate your application and how you use the GSP system. So you have to encrypt the data, you, you have to keep the credentials safe with you alone and only encrypted data passes through the GSP or ERP or the other taxpayer system. IRN, so those who are eligible for, I mean those documents which are eligible for registration on the e-invoice portal, for such documents from 1st January, we will not be allowing generation of EA bill from the EA bill system. So these documents have to generate the EA bill on the e invoice system itself. But it's not that they have to generate it only through the API mode. We have also provided the other like once you log in into the portal, there you can provide the IRN and enter the part B details 
and generate the EV bill one by one. Or there is an option to generate the EV bills in bulk. So the way it is being done on the EV bill system, as well as the way the IRNs are registered in bulk, there is a tool available using which you will be able to generate the EV bills in bulk by using the IRN as the reference. So here, uh, already part A data is available in the e invoice system uh, when the IRN is generated. Only the part B details have to be added and the EV bill has to be generated. And recent changes we have done after implementation of the e invoice is the EV bill also will have the IRN acknowledgement number and other details on the EV bill also. Uh, there are uh, different ways wherein the EV bill and IRNs can be generated. One is details of the EV bill with you while registering the invoice itself. You can send the payload with both IRN details as well as the EV bill details. And EV bill details may include the complete transportation details or only the transport detail. Plus, in the EV bill details, you only pass the transport detail and distance. Only part a slip will be generated, which, which we, of course, is our EV bill number. But since transportation details are not available, it is it is treated as a part a slip. So subsequently, you can give this IRN uh, is this EV bill number to your transporter. The respective transporter will be able to add the part B details and start moving the goods. So this is. One, in case you have all the details with you about the invoice as well as the EVB. So in case you don't have the transportation details, only you know the transporter transport detail and the party slip. And while generating the invoice, you may not be having both the transportation details as well as the transporter name or you have not yet finalized the transporter through which uh, you want to send the goods. Then you can still generate the IRN alone and subsequently by giving the IRN number, you will be able to generate either the part slip or the complete EV bill whenever you get the details about the transporter or about the transportation details. So using any of these combinations, you will be able to generate the EV bill on the e invoice system. So once the EV bill is generated or the part slip is generated, Using that number, any other operations uh, like updation of the part B or updation of transporter or cancellation of the EV bill or extension of bill, anything you would have done on the EV bill system will continue to be happening on the EV bill system as usual. First hour, and uh, the first month there were nearly 5 crore uh, IRS generated and in November 5.89. And in December, in the first 10 days, uh, more than 2 crores uh, IRNs have been generated by 24,000. And totally now 33,000 taxpayers have generated nearly uh, 12 crore, 13 crore uh, IRNs so far on the NIC portal. So for verification, already we have covered like there are two modes. Uh, one is uh, uh, they can verify they can build the application in their ERP itself. Uh, we have provided the public key and we have provided the, the mechanism how one can build the application to verify the uh, signature of the signed invoice locally. And if you are not able to do that, we have provided two ways. One you can upload the signed invoice onto the portal and get it verified, or you can make use of the QR code scanner application using which you will be able to scan the QR code and verify the content of the signed QR code. Here are some of the dates like we made available the API testing uh, on 1-11-2020 on the sandbox. And yesterday we have enabled the registration and generation of IRNs on the portal as well as API for the taxpayers having the turnover between 100 to 500 crore. So please note, since we have enabled it on the production, Whatever you are going to do on the production is the live data. So you are asked to your system or your integration or your data on the production environment. 
doing it now itself but please note whatever you generate is the actual data whether it is the irn or the evable so please don't be under the impression that this data will be discarded on the last day of december so this data is going to be there on the production environment as it is okay. so please uh, test we, we encourage you to test it on the production but do the testing with the actual data so actually you are going on live from 1 1 2021 the first one is uh, uh, the api testing uh, development and testing environment we have provided an online test tool also for the developer to understand how the apis work so they can go through this portal test the apis uh, uh, online and see how they work and the second one is the trial portal so bulk upload uh, etc can be uh, tried on this trial portal trial portal and the one is the production site for so this is end of my presentation on a offline tool which released recently in in addition to the bulk which we have been talking all this time we have also made available another tool which is more suitable for single entry kind of requirement so this is again based on the excel this is freely available uh, for download from the e-invoice portal so this is the gst e-invoice preparing and printing tool you can go to the e-invoice one hyphen trial dot nic dot one there is a simple registration and after registration you will be able to download this tool so this is more suitable for such businesses who don't have to generate uh, multiple invoices so if you are generating only 10 to uh, etc and uh, you neither want to go through the api mode or through the bulk uh, generation mode you can very well make use of this particular tool uh, but of course we are suggesting this only for such businesses who are having very less number of invoice uh, registration requirement per day so all the required uh, information on this tool uh, the video, the user manual, etc., are available in the portal invoice one hyphen trial dot nic dot in. So you can try out this tool. Uh, you can try out uh, on the uh, trial portal as you wish. Environment, please be, make sure that you are using the real data. So what is the nic jet tool actually? So as I mentioned, it's a Excel based tool for preparing. Invoice data. Print your invoices using this tool, which is not available in the bulk generation tool. So this assists the taxpayers to prepare and QR code. It facilitates the exchange of data with the invoice system as per the interface format. Suits for uh, taxpayers not having the ERP uh, system or issue 10 to 12 invoices per day. Beta version is released, so uh, we are waiting for the feedback from the users. And based on that, further enhancements to the tool will be done and final release will be uh, made shortly. As a benefit, you will be able to enter the invoice details one by one. Unlike the bulk tool, where you are supposed to so that is able to print the invoice along with your logo and QR code. So advantage over here. Then some local validations on calculation, etc., will happen locally on this tool itself, so that you will have you will have less number of validation errors when you upload the data onto the server. Only the other things will be validated on the server, such as the correctness of the HSM code or correctness of the GST or correctness of the PIN code, etc. But all other things like the calculations, etc., will be taken care in the offline tool itself. So any errors will be indicated locally, which will allow you to correct the mistakes and prepare the uh, JSON, uh, which is error free locally, 
Subsequently, you can upload it and any other validation errors are there. They have to be corrected subsequently and re-uploaded. So we are also providing some features over here where you will be able to generate some simple uh, financial statements. And uh, uh, data is available with you locally and which you can subsequently for any other purpose. This is to prepare the invoice manually or in your local system, whatever you have the computerized uh, system for your generation of invoices. It could be manual or it could be a computerized one. So subsequently, you will you will be opening this JEP tool, and in this you will be entering the invoice details one by one. So you can enter multiple invoices one at a time, and subsequently you can prepare a file which is in the form that can be uploaded onto the e invoice portal. So that may contain multiple requests and you can add up multiple, multiple invoice details into a single file and then you will be logging into the e invoice portal and there you will be uploading the file that is prepared. There is no difference between the file that is prepared using this tool and the, the file that is generated using the uh, bulk So this procedure remains the same. You will be uploading, you will be logging into the portal, you will be uploading the JSON, and once uploaded, some may fail or uh, in generation of the IRN, and whatever IRNs that have been successfully generated, that generated JSON downloaded, they can be into. So this is where, again, it makes a difference as compared to the bulk tool, IRN e invoice details, including the signed invoice, signed your code, etc., can be downloaded from the portal and imported into the JEP tool. So once you have imported over here, then you will be able to print the invoices using including the QR code using this particular tool. So let us have uh, some glimpse of this particular tool that we have already made it available. So here, these are different options available, like you can create a new invoice or you can see the pending invoices which are not yet uploaded onto the IRP portal. And this is the way you can import the QR code, like the, uh, the IRNs which are already generated, you can download and print the invoices. And uh, you can see the generated invoices list. Uh, we have given additional feature uh, where you can make the payment detailed entry also, which remains local to your Excel tool and search facility is there. And we have also provided some feature for maintaining the master data. So over here, we tell you how to make use of this tool. Uh, the detailed instructions are provided under the help. Then this is one time activity where you will enter your details and this will be stored in the master. You don't have to enter the supplier details again and again for uh, every generation of IRN. Uh, and here you can even upload your logo, your company logo, which will appear in the tool uh, as well as it will appear in the invoices that you are going to print through this particular tool. Next you can build the recipient master. So if you are doing business with the same uh, number of tax, uh, uh, taxpayers, you can make your own list of list of your buyers and make use of this for subsequent entry of invoice details. Similarly, you can make a master of product details. So again, um, their HSN codes, their tax rates, etc. Enter at once and get handy so that this data also will be useful when you are creating the invoices. So screen where this is what we were telling about the single entry screen where you will be able to enter one invoice at a time. So here you can choose the category, the reverse charge applicable or not, the document type, document number, etc. And when you go to the legal name, when you type few letters of your they are already and entered in your buyer's master, automatically the list will be shown. Once you choose the respective buyer's name, all the details will be automatically populated. And here you will be able to add the item details. So once everything is done, 
And if you have to enter the eviable details, you can click on this button, a form will pop up where you can enter the eviable details also, and you can save it. So like this, you can go on entering the uh, details of multiple invoices into this tool. And subsequently, uh, before you go ahead with the entry of the next invoice, you can even view the uh, preview of the invoice, how it looks like after you make all the entries. And once you have entered all the invoices, then you can have a look at how the data looks like in the tab tabular format. And here there is a button to validate the data. So when you click on this, whatever data you have entered, that will be validated. Any errors are there, they will be shown here. Uh, error will be indicated and you have to correct those uh, mistakes. And once all the mistakes are eliminated, you can click on prepare JSON button. So once you have prepared the JSON, you can come to the portal, you can log in here and then you can upload the JSON and you can generate the IRNs in bulk. So once you have generated the uh, IRNs, you can click on the download Excel button. So this will download the IRNs which are successfully generated and this taken onto the JEP tool and here you can click on the import QR code. So this will take the IRN details which are uh, generated on the invoice portal onto your JEP tool. So once it is available locally, then uh, if you want, you can push the current data into a archive. So uh, there is an option to push this to the archive. So once you have pushed it there, then uh, you can search uh, this uh, IRN or uh, based on the IRN or document, etc. Document number, etc. And this is how you will be able to print it, including your company logo, your company name, GSTN, etc. Okay. So this is what this doing with respect to the printing along with the QR code. And we have given some additional features where you can update the payment details also. After you have generated the IRN, subsequently, once you have received the payment against that particular invoice, uh, you will be able to enter this. This is purely for your local uh, use, the local computation, et cetera. If you want to maintain the record of payments against the invoice, et cetera, we have provided it as an additional feature over here. Then uh, you can search uh, uh, invoices already generated using the document number or the date or the IRN number. There are so many other combinations available using which you will be able to search already generated invoices. This is what uh, I had to show in this uh, brief presentation. So much for uh, listening to this. So thank you very much, uh, Suresh Metiji. You have given a solid uh, understanding for the viewers about the technicalities involved in the invoicing process. And uh, one uh, assurance uh, to the viewers and the, especially the businesses is that uh, some of the invoicing aspects are a bit technical in nature. So for that, definitely your uh, ERP or uh, technical service providers, they will be able to understand all this nitty gritty and definitely able to guide you in the generation of IRNs. And uh, now I request our uh, outreach and capability building team, GSTN, to project a list of questions which we have received on the live chat and the YouTube comment section so that we can take it up one by one. So before they just project the questions. I have one uh, important point to add uh, to what has uh, Suresh ji has told that once the signed invoice JSON is received from the IRP, many taxpayers are not saving them in their own systems. As you know, the invoice registration portal is only for validation and registration. It's not for storage. So only for a limited period of time or limited period of days, the invoice JSON info is available for download. So that's why my request to all of you is that 
kindly save the invoice json files once you have received from maybe in future actually it is under examination whether to give the invoice J, uh, json download facility to the buyer and uh, through what means and in what way that is under examination but uh, until that time our sincere request to you is that you please save the files and uh, few more things for the questions come up many are asking whether the nil rated and wholly exempt supplies whoever are dealing with this whether we need to do e invoicing or not you need not do e invoicing in those question in those scenarios because in those cases you will be issuing bills of supply and not a tax invoice under section 31 so now we have got uh, the questions can you please uh, expand it yeah is it mandatory for transporters so the question is slightly uh, unclear so the uh, e invoicing requirement is uh, on the uh, tax payers only that is the notified tax payers as per the notification they have to generate the e invoice through either apis or uh, through the offline utility next one how e invoice is from e way bill because we fill all the details of invoice in e way bill 2 yes in e way bill definitely you will be entering some of the item details but uh, e invoice is actually the invoice which you get from the irp with a digital signature and uh, the qr code and e way bill as you know it is only for uh, movement of goods and that to over a specified value but e invoice is there for b2b transactions and export transactions and that too for a notified set of tax payers so that is the difference between uh, these uh, both but one thing uh, i can tell you that uh, as item details are there in both uh, these places uh, yes you are correct that uh, this item details are presently uh, being uh, not printed on the e way bill again because they are anyway available on the E invoice that also will be coming in uh, future. Can we go to next question? Is e invoicing QR code compulsory for works contract? See the answer is clear. If you are raising a tax invoice under Section thirty one or the credit or debit notes under Section thirty four in the present scenario based on your business transaction. and uh, if you are above the uh, specified turn turnover threshold so then e invoicing is applicable to you so for both goods and services you have to issue e invoices yes yeah, this is what i was mentioning is it mandatory to, to generate e invoice for exempted goods so in case of wholly exempt goods and in case of nil rated goods what is issued is not a tax invoice under section 31 but a bill of supply so e invoicing is not needed next we are a 100 crore plus turnover company our gstn is enabled for e invoice can we start e invoicing before 1st january no uh only from uh, the middle of uh, december the nic is going to uh uh enable the generation of uh, invoice invoices from the production portal i mean for the purpose of production also uh, suresh ji can you kindly confirm uh, the position yeah uh, i have uh, already covered this like from yesterday onwards the 100 to 500 crore tax payers are also enabled on the production uh, for testing so actually with a uh, word of caution think that please don't use any dummy data you use the actual data for generation of the irn so that you can be very well prepared for 1st january so otherwise uh, on 1st january you may uh, face some uh, surprises so please test the uh, your activities whether you have integrated through the erp gsp or uh, through the bulk mode whatever so please make use of this facility which we have enabled 15 days on the production itself but use the actual uh, correct data because these are all going to be the valid evables and valid irns 
ਤੇ ਲੱਗ ਜੀ ਓਕੇ ਕੈਨ ਵੀ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਸੋ ਵਾਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਸ ਬਿਟਵੀਨ ਈਵੇਬਲ ਐਂਡ ਇਨਵਾਇਸ ਵੀ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਕਵਰਡ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਡੂ ਵੀ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਅਪਲੋਡ ਐਕਸਪੋਰਟ ਇਨਵਾਇਸਸ ਐਜ਼ ਵੈਲ ਈਵਨ ਦੋ ਜੀਐਸਟੀ ਇਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਐਪਲੀਕੇਬਲ ਸੀ ਈਵਨ ਫॉर ਦ ਐਕਸਪੋਰਟ ਸਪਲਾਈਜ਼ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਦ ਰਿਮੂਵਲ ਆਫ ਦ ਗੂਡ ਫਰਮ ਦ ਫੈਕਟਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਆਲ ਦ ਰੇਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਇਨਵਾਇਸ ਅੰਡਰ ਜੀਐਸਟੀ ਐਕਟ ਇਜ਼ देयर so accordingly you have to report those invoices also next is it compulsory to generate reverse charge mechanism invoices through e invoicing so in reverse charge mechanism there are different scenarios so uh, if you excuse me we have already given link of the faqs in the youtube chat just a few few minutes back it was uploaded you kindly see the question number 24 in this uh, faqs so that it will answer the entire scenarios of the uh, reverse charge mechanism next how to cancel invoice in case of any error yes within 24 hours from the generation of irn you can cancel the invoice accordingly it will be updated in the gstr1 if you cannot cancel it within the 24 hours and after maybe if some few days or few weeks you wanted to cancel it there is no problem and if you are issuing another credit note or if you are issuing another invoice you please take another ir number for that and at the end of the tax period when you are uh, filing your gstr please ensure that the final invoices you have actually generated they are only being reported in the gstr1 which is the end of the tax period summary for for all the invoices generated during the tax period next can be make single invoice for multiple hsn uh the question is not uh, very clear so in a single invoice there are uh, definite there can be multiple hsns so that's why in the e invoice schema so for different items there i mean uh, up to almost 1000 items you can enter in a typical invoice and also 2 mb is the maximum size maximum json file which you can upload on the irp so uh, you can definitely select multiple hsns and multiple items in a single invoice next is there exemption for hospitals industry so we have given uh, clearly the exemptions from invoicing that is the scz units and all the other uh, special invoicing scenarios mentioned in rule 54 rule 54 of the cgst rules next are housing finance companies exempted so banks and uh, nbfcs they are exempt as per uh, rule 54 you can see that next in 2018 19 our turnover was 106 crore and in 1920 turnover was 99 crores are we liable to generate e invoicing so the amended notification is very clear it says that if you have crossed the prescribed turnover in any preceding financial year since 2017 18 invoicing is applicable so in this example as you have crossed the prescribed turnover in 2018 19 so you have to do e invoicing next whether the e invoice is mandatory for each and every invoice irrespective of the value of the invoice yes if it is a b2b or export invoice and if you are beyond the prescribed threshold irrespective of the value of individual invoice you have to generate invoice e invoicing next is there any requirement under invoicing to add authorized signatory who signs the invoice on gst portal like it was under vat see in invoicing scenario from your system you will be uploading or you will be reporting the invoices to the irp while doing so we have already mentioned that digital signature is not required and also the reporting through apis or when you are uploading through your secure login in the e invoice portal it is a very secure mechanism you only can enter into that uh, login or you will only be authenticating those APIs. so you can securely uh do that uh, reporting process 
So it is not linked to any authorized signatory. Uh, uh, Suresh ji, can you also add to this? Yes, sir. Just, yes, just like when you are creating the account itself, it will be validated against the mobile number and email ID of the authorized signatory. So we have been uh, seeing some scenarios. I, will, I, I would like to just add another point. Uh, you have not updated your mobile number and on the GST common portal, but when you come and try to register yourself, you may face problem. So when you face such problem in registration for the invoices, I um, mean in e-invoice system, so you have to go to the common portal, update the correct mobile number and email ID, and then come back to uh, the e-invoice portal next day and register yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Sureshji. Next. How can we do real-time bulk upload in IRP? Yeah, see the bulk generation tool, which is in fact the offline utility for invoicing, which is a freely downloadable utility for the IRP. The word used is bulk uh, generation tool, but you can use it uh, for even a, to generate a single invoice also. So if you say that each row represents a single invoice details, you can either uh, enter one invoice or multiple, that is bulk invoices, and at a, at a time, you can upload it on the IRP and uh, the IRNs will be generated one by one in a sequential manner. And you can download Our revenue is exempt from GST because we are selling electricity generated from wind renewable. Do we have to register on invoicing? So we have already spoken that uh, wherever the supplies are wholly exempt or nil rated, what you issue is a bill of supply and not a GST invoice. So invoicing is not applicable accordingly. Next. Is GST number mandatory to update invoice for export invoice? Uh, it is slightly unclear. So you you may be mentioned you may be asking about the uh, recipient GST agent. Yeah, Sureshi, can you pitch in here? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. If that is the case, then enter the URP. URP. Yeah. Uh, 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 professional. So, uh, so this is a practice in the EV bill also. The EV bill, so they are aware of it. So here, when you are exporting in the buyer GST and details, you will be entering URP. So in case of exports, as the recipient is uh, in fact not a registered person GST, so URP can be selected. Next. So is digital signature certificate compulsory or electronic verification code will do for entities other than private limited for e-invoice generation? So as we have already uh, discussed, digital signature is not at all required while uh, reporting the invoices to the IRP. Uh, Suresh, can you also pitch in here? You can give more clarity. This is uh, not required. The DSC is not required. Uh, as you have already clarified, like they have to upload the unsigned JSON itself. The IRP will sign and give back the signed uh, e invoice and signed QR code. Yes, there is no uh, actually relevance of electronic verification code that is EVC, which was asked actually. How to generate e invoice where the invoice is generated post delivery of goods like oil and gas industries where quantities are not certain at the time of removal of goods? See, in case of even uh, continuous supply of goods, which you are referring here, so. Even in the invoicing scenario, the substantial provisions of GST law, that is the time of supply, uh, the time to generate invoice, uh, the, the time to generate invoice, they, they didn't undergo any change. Please make a note of it. Whenever you are in the, in the present scenario, or even the pre-invoicing scenario, whenever you are going to generate an invoice under uh, GST invoice under uh, section 31, or the credit or debit note under section 34, you have to generate IRN and issue e invoice to your buyer. That is the legal position. Next. What to do if we have to dispatch material in 
upload in different dates under one invoice how can how then how to raise invoice same answer goes here so depending upon the business requirements and practices whenever you sure you are issuing invoice in whichever form you are issuing so those uh, invoices once they are under section 31 kindly report into the portal next we are facing error in generating e invoice for our customers whose gst number is deactivated by gst department why this stopping us to generate e invoice so uh, suresh ji can you kindly tell the exact validation built in here yeah here the gst the buyer gst has to be valid and active at the time of generation of the invoice and if, even if you are generating for previous dates we are checking whether on that date that particular gstn was active or not so that is the validation built in so the the buyer has to be buyer gstn has to be active uh, for the time which is mentioned uh, the date which is mentioned on the document okay so the e invoice portal is smart enough to to see whether the supplier and recipient whether they are uh, duly active and uh, under under the gst so that's how the validation is built Next, Ravi, sir, Ravi, sir, please add. Sir. You know, may I intervene a little bit? I mean, uh, one please, has sir. to see from please. the point of view of the if the customer is deactivated in GSTN, that means uh, he is no more registered and uh, not carrying out any business or not doing compliances. So for yes, sir. Uh, them uh, issuing of any invoice uh, uh, so that he can take credit is not warranted. So yes, that sir. is why yes, check has been placed on the GST system. Thank you, sir. So we crossed the PAN-based turnover. We have seven registrations in various states, means seven GSTINs in various states. Do we need to generate invoice in all states? The answer is yes. The moment uh, a PAN or an entity crosses the prescribed aggregate turnover defined in section 2 of the CGST Act, all the GSTNs pertaining to that has to start invoicing. Next. How do we identify ERP? Who are eligible through whom taxpayer can integrate with IRP? Uh, can Suresh Pankajji pitch in here? Go for uh, registration for uh, API, there they have uh, some radio buttons. One is for choosing the GSP, one is for choosing the ERP, and another one for choosing the uh, GSTN uh, above 400 crore who have already uh, have done the direct integration. So they can choose the respective radio button, and the respective list of GSPs or ERPs will come there, and they can pick and choose the respective ERPs. Pankaj, if you want to add, I think is now. Okay, thank you. So next question. Export invoices are in foreign currency. So for generating IR and QR code, amount should be in INR or foreign currency. See the amounts and values which are uh, to be reported as per the schema, INV01, are in rupees only. But in addition, as per the schema, you can uh, add one uh, additional foreign currency in, in that also. So that facility is there in the scheme. Just uh, check the schema regarding this. Next one. When we cancel invoice, our ERP system will generate a new cancel number that will not be having any IR number. Is this fine? See, when you are canceling an invoice within your ERP system, and if you have not reported it to IRP, there is no problem. Whenever you are creating an uh, invoice in your system and reporting it to the portal, once, the, uh, once you get the signed JSON, then if you are canceling it, please generate another invoice with a different document number so that another unique IRN will be generated. So this is the position. Yeah, next.
so these are all the questions i suppose we have received in the live chat uh, any more questions which are which we could not uh, uh, answer here for any reason uh, if you have more questions you can post uh, you can keep on posting it and uh, we'll be we'll be trying to answer them in the comment section itself even after the conclusion of this webinar so uh, before we end uh, i request uh, uh, mr dheeraj rastogi sir senior vice president uh, gst network to kindly offer any uh, ending remarks uh thank you ravi uh, and uh, i find it uh, that uh, whatever you have covered and uh, uh, suresh ji also gave a detailed uh, presentation on the jeb tool so it uh, it seems that it would be quite informative and useful to the trade and i especially thank the my outreach team and uh, also captain uh, Akash Dixit, who have been uh, making the efforts to make it successful. I thank you all for attending the webinar uh, very patiently and listening to you, uh, listening to us. Knowing the questions from you definitely educates us. and it also helps us to improve the system so thank you very much thank you thank you all of you thank you sir uh, thank you all the participants for uh, uh, for participation in this webinar uh, we will soon meet in a, another enlightening event shortly by gstn thank you thank you one and all thank you very much